MacDonald, uh, maintainer of the Internet Base Library. I've recently been working on the uh, garbage collection. Um, first page here History of Garbage Collection in Objective C. It's really started with the poem Conservative Garbage Collector, written in 1988. So it's a venerable piece of software. Uh, Lib Foundation, which was written around the same time as GNU Set Base, introduced the garbage collection to an Objective C Foundation library in 1998, and I added it to GNU Set Base in 1999. So Apple Coco introduced it in 2007. Right. Why do we have garbage collection? Well, the original reason we added it was for, to make things easier for a programmer. Me managing memory is just a pain. So you can decrease the memory management overheads with garbage collection. You don't have to do reference counting that kind of thing. So we do have a good reference counting mechanism. Um, we wanted our garbage collection system to be portable cross-platform because GNU Step is a very cross-platform development system. Um, we wanted a single code base originally for both garbage collecting code and a non-garbage collecting version. And originally we wanted Lib Foundation compatibility because we believe in conforming to the standards and the only other implementation that used garbage collection at all was Lib Foundation. Another reason for garbage collection was performance. Contrary to uh, a lot of ideas, the garbage collection at the time actually seemed to work faster in real life than reference counting. That's mo mainly anecdotal evidence from Lib Foundation. Certainly, Lib Foundation showed that garbage collecting systems could be comparably fast to normal reference counting implementations. I'm sorry, but uh, isn't it that the systems which run the GC faster only when they deal with a small number of objects? If you deal with a lot of objects, it's much slower. When you deal with C, you can do localization on your own, you can write your own memory management you can do a lot quicker. Um, no, that's not necessarily true. I think the Burn Library, for instance, does um, thread local garbage collection, which lets you localize where you're collecting data from, so you don't have to worry about um, scanning the whole of the memory, for instance. Um, the Apple implementation also has a different mechanism for avoiding scanning all the memory all the time. Um, and pragmatically, the code that you tend to write in something like C++ or C to handle the memory management is generally slower. Yes, you can optimize it to be faster, but you can also do that in the garbage collecting environment in Objective-C. So what you're talking about overall performance for the, the average user, um, garbage collection can work out faster, mm -hmm. yeah, generally. And when you're talking about customizing specific micromanaging little tasks, you can hard code it yourself in whichever language you like. Um, so why did we use the Burn Library? Well, it was public domain code, which is kind of important. It was already very mature and stable by the time we introduced it. Um, it was what, 10 years old at that point. It was quite portable. There were a lot of um, systems supported by the Burn Library. And it was very fully featured. It did really pretty much everything you want for the garbage collector by that time. Um, because it, of its use in Lib Foundation, it had already been integrated into the GNU runtime. Um, it's currently included in the GCC uh, repositories, part of GCC, uh, or at least a, a particular version which is not very latest. Um, and it was said to perform very well. Um, okay, the way garbage collection is used in the new step base is that all the object allocation is typed collectible memory. Uh, what we mean by that is that 
at the point where the object is created, we know which instance variables of the object are pointers to things that we might want to um, keep a reference to within the garbage collection system. And we know that other parts of the instance variables are not. So the garbage collector knows about those and doesn't have to scan them. Um, when we allocated memory generally, everything was allocated as scan collectible by default. Uh, so every memory, every bit of memory allocated could contain pointers to things apart from the typed collectible uh, objects. And also with the exception of GS atomic malloc zone. In the OpenStep API, you allocate memory in different zones. So we introduced that zone to say, here's a zone where you don't need to scan it. There will be no pointers in this area. Um, the plus point of doing all that was that it was very easy to convert applications. You don't unexpectedly collect memory because all the stuff that you used to um, implicitly allocate on the heap in the default zone is now scanned. So it's safe in that respect. But it does mean that it's a bit slower. So more memory than necessary to scan. And data that doesn't contain pointers would be scanned. And possibly you'd think you have a pointer and keep something allocated. It's essentially leak memory a little. Um, so the use of the atomic mallet zone internally meant that actually within the base library we didn't have any of those problems. <laughs> uh, the way the root object and its object was changed um, was to ignore the allocation zone. Of course, we don't want to allocate in a particular zone anymore. We're using garbage collected memory. Auto release, deallet release, retain. They're not used anymore, so they just do nothing. The retain count returns uint max, just to say this is retained as many times as possible if not going to be deallocated. Um, I already said that. <laughs> Allocated objects using the type memory, the, um, only the pointer instance variables are standing. So, because we changed that to remove or well, comment out effectively the deallot method, um, the paradigm of doing cleanup in the allocation of objects no longer works. Of course. And that means that the ideal way to handle that in most objects is to invalidate the object and do explicit cleanup of things like closing file descriptors. If we can't do explicit cleanup because we don't know where we're getting rid of an object, it's hanging around somewhere, we need to use a finalization. <coughs> For finalization, we added a new protocol, um, the GC finalize protocol. Um, basically, any class which conformed to that protocol was finalized. Um, it was finalized by using the GC finalize method. The idea of that is that you, you shouldn't ever call that code in your own code. It's like dialog, um, except that it's called by the garbage collector. So there should never be any need for you to call it, except, of course, you need to call the superclass impl implementation if you're writing a, a subclass of another class that's already finalized. Um, the method's called automatically when the object is deallocated. Finalization is fairly expensive to use, so you should use as little as possible. Uh, the, the problem is that when you do a garbage collection run, you finalize, finalize all the methods that have a finalizer set, and that means that you can end up executing quite a lot of code at one time. Um, so you make the finalization method lightweight and minimize that. Weak pointers were added. Uh, a weak pointer doesn't prevent the collection of the object you're pointing to. Um, it could be created by registering in the finalized initialized methods of the class. Um, so whenever whenever a, a class 
instance is created, the initialized method, or the first time a method is sent to a class, the initialized method is implicitly run. And that allows you to say all objects of that class will be finalized, uh, sorry, will have weak pointers in the future. Um, weak pointers in the Bohm library are not automatically zeroed. So you can get a situation where you're pointing to something, that object, because it's a weak pointer, gets collected, so your pointer is ending up pointing to nowhere. So if that's going to be a problem, the object that needs it's going to be deallocated needs to have a finalizer method to remove or clear that weak pointer in the other object. That's very much the same sort of situation that you get with the standard <coughs> OpenStep library where you have um, say a notification observer and that observer gets deallocated, its deallocated method removes its removes the object from the notification system. Control of the collector. Um, of course, there are times when you don't want garbage collection to happen if you've got timing critical code. So you can temporarily disable, re-enable the collector. There are times when you think you've gone round the loop allocating lots of objects that you don't need anymore and you want to reduce the memory footprint of your application, so you want to request an a collection. Either using inbuilt thresholds, so if so much memory has been allocated then we'll do a collection, or unconditionally, we want to collect any garbage right away no matter what. Um, we also need to be able to register an unregistered zero memory pointers. Well, that's done via native calls to the collector. The other thing we added way back then was a whole load of macros. Um, the retain calls retain if you're running compiling in garbage um, in conventional system and does nothing. Comments it out effectively if you're um, compiling for a garbage collection similarly with all the others. The idea of that was for performance. Yes, <laughs> why use them? Okay, back then, the overheads of actually making those reference counting method calls were significant. That's really not the case on the modern process. Um, the other reasons for putting these macros in was for reliability. Um, <coughs> destroy is a convenient way of zeroing the pointer so that you know that the object it points to can be collected uh, rather than having to remember to deallocate it or, and then zero the pointer you use a macro for it. Assign helps present, prevent mistakes in the same sort of way. Um, it builds in a bit of intelligent standard usage, good practice. Um, right, the downside of that is that if you compile code with those macros, then if you compiled it in a garbage collecting environment, your calls to retain, release, auto release, whatever, don't exist anymore. So your binary can't be run without a garbage collecting version of the library. I'm not sure that that's really a problem. Uh, the other downside is purely that they're a bit inelegant. Um, so maybe we'll get rid of those macros. So, why did we want to change it all? Which is what this is really about. Um, well, originally we were Loop Foundation compatible. Um, there's no, been no interest in garbage collection in Objective-C for many years. I, I know that. <laughs> because I know of some bugs in the code that have been there for years and no one has complained about them. So, <laughs> um, Possibly that's because the retain release mechanism reference counting actually is good, works very well in general. But now Apple, Coco have introduced garbage collecting themselves and revived the interest in it. And 
Lib Foundation is obsolete. No one really uses it anymore, so there's no point in us trying to be compatible with the Lib Foundation implementation. So we changed the whole focus to be Apple compatible now. We're not throwing away the existing work, really. Uh, we're keeping the bone library. Right. Why doesn't Kodo use it if it's so great? <laughs> well, maybe they just like their own code. Certainly, they have no need for portability. Yeah, they can write code optimized for their own system. Um, their implementation does depend on compiler support, which they've built in. And they can do that because they have a dedicated compiler for their own system. They say they wanted more predictability and they wanted better performance. I don't actually know of any evidence that they have that, but maybe they have. <coughs> okay, what difference does using Bone make over Apple's implementation? Well, the Apple implementation uses zero and weak, zero and weak memory for that, and Bone doesn't have that. It does have zero and weak pointers. Um, their implementation does generational garbage collection. They compiler keeps the compiler puts stuff in the code so they can keep track of which objects have been allocated recently, and so they can look at those recent objects first when they're doing a garbage collection run, which hopefully means that they um, get rid of objects that they're likely not to need very quickly without having to do a full run. Um, on the other hand, the Bowen library has thread local garbage collection, which means that you don't have to worry about stopping all the threads to do a garbage collect. So there are performance differences either way. Okay, so the change to the way the base library garbage collection works to make it compatible with Objective-C, uh, with Coco. Um, okay, all that object allocation is type selectable. That's not a change. <laughs> Stays the same. But um, we have a new function, ns allocate collectible. That's Apple API, and that will give you scanned or unscanned memory, and it will say whether that memory itself can be collected or not. Default malloc zone is unscanned, uncollectible. So you have to free it explicitly. That's completely the opposite of the way the base library used to do it, where we had scan collectible by default. So that's a major shift in that one point. <coughs> finalization. Well, they still have finalization, but of course, that is different. So now they have a finalized method where we had a GC finalized, so we have to change all our method names, but that's pretty trivial. Um, all you need to do is implement that method in your subclass to have it have that class finalized, um, whereas we had protocol to flag whether or not the class needs finalization. That was also easy to change. Um, it looks cleaner and simpler. I prefer finalize as a method name for finalization. Um, so we already, we've already changed to implement that. <coughs> Zero and weak pointers, that's a fairly big issue of difference. That's Coco added the weak keyword, underscore weak keyword, in the compiler to mark an instance variable as a zero and weak pointer. Because we don't have the compiler support yet, though it's possible we could add it to GCC, um, we have a, a <coughs> runtime mechanism to do the same sort of thing. So we've added the function gs make weak pointer, and what you need to do is call that in the initialize method of your class to say that a particular instance variable is a weak pointer. Uh, we also have GS assign zero in weak pointer, which lets you assign a value to a, a zero in weak pointer. Um, Apple don't need that because their compiler implicitly does it. It knows that the pointer is a, weak, a zero in weak pointer because of the new keyword. And the compiler will do the overheads of telling the 
um, garbage collecting library that you've made an assignment to that pointer. We have to do it explicitly. Um, again, if someone adds compiler support, we can avoid doing that. Hopefully, hopefully that's not too difficult. <coughs> Notifications. Um, that's a big part of the way OpenStep applications work, sending notifications to different objects. If a notification center retains an observer, then the observer is never going to be deallocated. Um, obviously, we don't want that. So we don't retain the observer and we use a weak pointer. But if the observer is deallocated and we haven't removed it from the notification center, we're going to get a crash when the center tries to send a notification to that object. So the observer has to be removed again somehow. Traditionally, that's done in the um, observer's dialog method. But now we have a zeroing weak pointer used in the notification center. So the observers no longer need to remove themselves. <coughs> we have a similar situation with key value observing, um, where an observer uh, normally unregisters itself from observing <coughs> an object at the point when it's deallocated. Again, we use zero and weak pointers, so we avoid the observer having to do that. Um, it's a mechanism that's generally applicable for any sort of system where you have one object observing another object. And it avoids the need to finalize those observers. Um, and as I've said before, minimizing the use of finalization is a good thing. Um, the other advantage is that the burden of management is lifted from the application programmer. They no longer need to worry about removing themselves as observers just forget about the whole thing. Traditionally, delegates of objects are not retained. Now, that's so that you don't get retained loops causing delegates to never be released, which is the problem with a reference counting system. With a garbage collecting system, you don't have to worry about the retained loops because the garbage collector will resolve that. So we actually have no need to use weak pointers for delegates. So the fact that our zero and weak pointers are currently different from the Apple ones um, is actually nothing like as big a problem as it might seem because almost everywhere that you used, used to use weak pointers or would expect to use weak pointers, you don't actually need to anymore. So, how's con collection control? Well, before it was done directly by calls to the Bowen library. Now we use Apple's API, a new NS garbage collector class. So this class is implemented already, and you don't have to know anything about the Bowen API anymore. The default collector method of the class returns nil if garbage collection is not in use. So it's a great runtime check to see if the application is working in the garbage collecting environment. Um, so at the moment, for instance, we have we use that in the regression testing suite to um, control how, which regression tests we do, depending on whether we're running with garbage collection or not. Obviously, some tests are inappropriate in different setups. Um, collective needed that triggers a garbage collection. It's really the same as the functionality we had with the Bowen library, so we just wrap the Bowen library's call. There's a threshold amount of memory. If we've allocated that much memory since the last garbage collection, then a collection takes place. Collected exhaustively, we have a full garbage collection <coughs> done. Disabled, <coughs> enabled, is enabled. They tell you whether garbage collection is in use at the moment. Um, Okay, the NS auto release tool class. Uh, it's pretty much obsolete. Um, I 
pointing an object to a pool obviously does nothing. There's no point doing it. Um, Apple added the drain method, so we implemented it too. Um, it does the same thing as collect if needed. So I'm actually, I have no idea why Apple added that method. As far as I can see, the fact it really ought to be completely obsolete in the garbage collecting environment. But we did that for compatibility. The NS pointer array class. Um, it's a new class introduced by Apple in Mac OS 10.5. It um, can hold pointers and or integers. It can contain nil objects and null pointers, which is a kind of departure from all the collection classes traditionally in, um, in the OpenStep API. You can tell it to use zero and weak memory so that items become nil or null when they're collected. Um, so internally we implement that as using the zeroing weak pointers that the and collector uses. So from the point of view of an application programmer, there's no difference there. It works exactly like the Apple implementation. Not completely implemented in GNU-step yet. Um, I expect that to be finished in about two weeks. And it's hash table. When we when we originally implemented garbage collection in um, new step base way back, we added support for weak pointers there, um, but they were not zeroing weak pointers. Apple have taken a, a very different approach. They've, they've actually removed the NS hash table object as it was and <coughs> made it into a full class with support for zero and weak pointers. So it automates the removal of collected items. Um, we are going to change to match that and I imagine that will probably be ready in about two weeks as well. It's really the same, pretty much the same set of code as the NS pointer array. NS map table. Um, the situation is very similar. Originally, we supported weak pointers, but only for weak, point, weak pointers for keys and values. So, if your map has is set up for weak pointers, then it was both weak pointers for keys and weak pointers for values. Apple had made it into a class, and they've added separate support for weak pointers for keys and weak pointers for values. Um, we're going to make the same change. Um, again, you're looking about two weeks before that's done. So we have almost the same garbage collection functionality as Apple do. Um, hash table and NS map table need updating to be access classes. Um, yeah, the direct use of zero and weak pointers remains different. That's the only difference you'll see between the two APIs now. And that's that will probably change if, if and when someone puts in the compiler support in GCC to automate it for us. Um, but until then, as I say, it's minimally used. So, not a big deal for portability. Um, and that's it. So, essentially, an overview of all the change. Basically, we've implemented or will have implemented within a few weeks the entire garbage collecting API of Mac OS 10.5. Questions? <laughs> uh, excuse me, I could make clear what's the uh, main strategy to run garbage collector? Is it uh, tracing from roots to objects or reference counting or something combined? Uh, the Boehm, well, you, you really ought to look at the Boehm garbage collecting library documentation. For that. <coughs> Essentially, it's a, it's a conservative garbage collector. It scans memory. Uh -huh. um, full scan from from roots. Sorry? Okay. A full no. scan? Mm -hmm. no. um, it scans everything on the stack, everything in the registers, mm -hmm. and ev everything on the heap that it's been told to scan. Um, so, so, so it scans through all heap, which is uh, quite expensive. Yeah, but it mm -hmm. will do thread sep that on separate threads, mm -hmm. um, separate heaps for separate threads, if you like. Um, and generally speaking, it doesn't. It's not that expensive because most of the memory you allocate 
doesn't get scanned because it knows not to scan it, because it knows there are no pointers in it, or it knows that certain sections of memory have mixtures of pointers and non-pointer parts of memory. That's called typed memory. Mm -hmm. It knows what type of memory is at different locations. So it knows which parts it needs to scan and which parts it doesn't. So it's nothing like having to scan the whole heap. And um, in fact, it can make good guesses about what's a valid pointer and all that kind of thing. It's really very good at minimizing that. It's a key feature. So that's something that Bohm worked on for many years. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how does the UGC um, map uh, uh, Sorry. Uh, see in the stack which, which are pointers and which are not? Which ones are pointers? The stack, it doesn't know the type. It has to assume so that. It's, it's, it's well, I mean, obviously, it knows that some things are the, the frame pointers within the stack. It has an understanding of the, um, the actual stack layout. But when it comes to the actual data variables on the stack, it won't know the type. Um, so it has some fairly basic heuristics. I mean, if it's um, if what it sees on the stack is an integer that has the lowest bit set, it knows it's not a pointer to a block of memory, so it won't bother looking at that. But essentially, it's going to look at the whole of the Okay, so the whole of the stack. So it's still conservative on the stack? Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Thank you.